Noor, I guess it gets back to the question of whether Mississauga sees itself as kind of a suburb of Toronto where the car reigns supreme yeah. or whether it sees itself as more of an intensified city, as Toronto clearly now does, at least the old city of Toronto, where you got to have bike lanes because you're trying to encourage active participation and yeah. transportation. What and do I, you think? And I think this election is really a referendum on like where Mississauga wants to go in the next 50 years. Like, does it want to continue to be this suburb that, you know, suited the commuters of Mississauga, of Toronto, who would come into work and then drive up there? Or does it really kind of see itself in this new vision as a, as a, as a city? And, you know, when I have done, you know, interviews on this, people have talked about this, that we we're not ready to let go of our suburban past. But we are. We also see the reality facing us that we have grown out. You know, we can only grow up now. We need better transportation. Our, our children can't afford to live in Mississauga. They can't find homes. They move out to Milton or Burlington or even further out um, because they can't afford. They can't find homes. And so I think this is a reality that people are. They're seeing. They're facing it, and they're seeing it, and it's coming at them quite quickly. And and I've been really surprised, and actually pleasantly surprised, just when I speak to people that people are thinking about this. Like, how do we want our city to? in 50 years? Do we want, you know, one person I spoke to had this great term. He said, you know, we've had these windshield neighborhoods and windshield neighbors forever, what right? Does that mean? Like we say hello to our neighbor through the windshield oh. and then we say goodbye to them through the windshield and we ask about their kids through the windshield and we see their, their children grow up through the windshield, right? And we've never like really gone from, moved from that, but a lot of people want to. They want to go out and actually shake their hand and, you know, not be stuck in traffic all the time. And so I think, and so many people have said that to me all, you know, across generations that I really think that Masaga is at a, at a point where they really want to kind of you know, tepidly and, and, you know, shyly go into becoming a city. But like Rahul is saying, it's, it's painful. It's not easy. Well, let me and get Zachary I think on that as well. Zachary, that. do you know, do you know whether Mississauga wants to continue to feature that suburban lifestyle it has been well known for for the past half century? Or does it want to be a more intensified urban existence? Well, that's an interesting question, because for most of the city's history, there's been remarkable consensus around policies and politics, right? There was a certain type of type of housing that we were building, a certain type of community that we were pursuing. Um, and that is changing because the city is now facing harder uh, choices around things like taxes, finance and crime, safety, right? And so I think that um, that the city could be at a bit of a inflection point here, thinking about what the next 50 years holds. And there are certain um, parts of the city that want to remain a suburb. The people who have who have lived there for 30, 40 years moved to, Miss to, to Mississauga because they wanted a certain lifestyle. Like they wanted a single detached family home. They wanted to drive and they wanted a certain type of lifestyle that wasn't exactly what you would find within Toronto. Um, they probably want more of that, right? But then there is a younger g generation of folks who say that, well, I, I want to live here too. And uh, I've I, I deserve uh, the options that the previous gen, gen, previous generations had access to. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.